Today, December 31st, marks the last day of 2020. And this was the first year that I started algo trading, basically coding trading bots to invest my money for me automatically in the stock market with conditions and rules and different position sizings. It can get pretty complex. In 2020, I made $10,993.63 from algo trading. Those were my profits. Okay, so here's my platform Ninja Trader, which is basically a third party software that you can actually build and create algorithms to uh, make trading bots or make automated trading uh, systems. So here we have uh, two of my account IDs. This U1 is my Interactive Brokers account. And this one is my new account uh, that I actually ended up switching brokerages for futures trading uh, just because of lower commissions and better margin requirements. Interactive Brokers is pretty strict. But anyways, just wanted to show you proof uh, that I made the money that I said um, and show you guys that, you know, it's actually true. It's been a crazy year. And I will say this first, I got extremely lucky. I started algo trading when there was a lot of volatility in the markets. There was lots of volume, right? A lot of people were trading. A lot of people could only work from home and, you know, looked at stocks as a, another income source. And I got insanely lucky by starting at that time. Back in February, when I was coding my first trading strategy, I had no idea, you know, what would happen in the markets and, and the world, of course. And I got very lucky by starting at the right time. My first trading system, I think I started at the end of February, the last week of February, and I actually did very bad because at that time, you know, the markets were going quite a bit down. And I almost gave up and basically lowered the position sizing. And then over April until now, started seeing a lot of success. I've learned a lot over this year and I'm very excited for 2021 building new strategies, adapting to current market conditions. And in this video, I wanted to talk about the major things I learned over the year, my struggles, uh, my frustrations, and just give you an insight of what it's like to somewhat trade algos on a full time. Obviously, I have many other income sources, including YouTube. So $10,000 might not seem a lot over the year. Obviously, it's maybe below poverty line. But what excites me is this is just the beginning, right? Building that account, right? And you know, the process has been very fun. There's been many worrisome times and frustrations over risk and stuff like that, but it's been a lot of fun. And I'm more excited on the process than you know how much I made at the end of the year. Making a profit in general over a year, I think is great. And I've actually been able to beat the market with my current returns. I returned just over 24% from my trading systems. Um, I did add money into my account as the year progressed. So I did technically start with $3,000 US, but I added more and more money over the year. So that $10,000 um, isn't as much as it seems. If I just started with, with 3,000, obviously that'd be cr a crazy return, but I did add money over the year. So it only ended up being a 24% return, which is still incredible, um, You know, more than doubling the market, uh, which is really great. Now, the question is, can I continue that for the next year and the next year and the next year? Let's talk about the journey of, of doing this trading system. So believe it or not, I actually shut off my trading system for quite a bit of time in 2020. And I made quite a bit of money, you know, just by timing the market, right? So initially I started my strategy at the end of February, okay? And if you look at the S&P 500 index, it started crashing around that time and reached a low around, I think March 16th or 17th, something like that. And when I started my strategy, the first week alone, I was trading at such a small size. I was just trading the micro, um, the micro futures, so the micro ES. And I think my first week I was down like 200, $300. So it wasn't a big deal. And, you know, over the next two weeks, I, I was consistently losing money. I think I ended up stopping the strategy um, for a whole like two to three weeks in March, um, just because it was losing so much. And I kept, you know, trying to improve it and basically overfit my strategy. Um, which took me a while to learn. So once I started like doing that, like basically stopping the strategy when it wasn't doing so well and setting a risk level, that's when I made the most money because I cut my losers a lot. And when I restarted the strategy, generally my rule was I restart the strategy 30 days later. So whenever I turned it off, I said, okay, I'm gonna turn it on 30 days later. It seems a little bit random and I know it kind of is. I don't have an automated system to restart the strategy after a certain amount of risk levels. That's something I'm still working on. But just that strategy alone, that process of restarting it at a later date when the market is more in my favor, um, I got lucky and timed it really well. And that's where I saw all of my gains. And in October and November, I saw a ton of gains because 
once again in September we saw a massive um, a massive correction, uh, especially with the Nasdaq. Uh, and and I actually you know traded my or switched my strategy to trade the Nasdaq futures instead of the S and P 500 futures just because I saw more volatility in that uh, over the summer. And by stop, I had to stop the strategy somewhere in September. You know, I was losing quite, I had quite a bit of losses and I stopped it for 30 days and restarted in October. And most of my gains were made in October and November. Um, I also, you know, traded the micro NASDAQ or sorry, the e-mini NASDAQ instead of the micro. So NQ instead of M and Q. And obviously there's more leverage with that, right? It's a highly, lev it's a, it's a more leveraged asset. And I saw greater returns with that. And I took a lot of risk. Okay. There were some days that, you know, I was down two to 3000 and my account was, you know, in the 13, $14,000 range. So that's quite a bit, right? It's like, that's like 10% in a day. Um, so I risked a lot, right? I, I, you know, I was okay with losing quite a bit because I knew what I was doing and I had control of when to stop and start the strategy. So I got insanely lucky and I saw a lot of my profits in October and November when we saw, um, you know, kind of that correction in September and the market, you know, kind of went the other direction, changed to a bullish kind of standpoint. So anyways, just to summarize that, I made a lot more money kind of not running my strategy 24 seven, stopping it once I hit a certain risk level and restarting it 30 days later. Um, and I think this year alone, I, I did that probably about three times where I stopped it and then started it again 30 days later and saw a little bit of success. If I hit a risk level, stop it, wait 30 days, start it again, and I saw a bit of success. Obviously, the timing was incredible, right? This year, we saw a massive drop in March and then a massive bull trend since March, okay? And I predict for 2021, we're gonna see a sideways market. I think it's gonna still end green, obviously, because generally it does, but it's gonna be less volatile, um, less volume. I could be wrong. I'm, I'm no financial analyst. I'm no you know hedge fund manager or anything like that. Um, this is just like my opinion, uh, my subjective opinion. So if you guys have thoughts on 2021, let me know in the comments below. But what I'm trying to do now to adapt for 2021 is work on uh, strategies that, you know, work well in a sideways market or look for volatility. Uh, because I think you can make a lot more profit with volatility and when you don't have it, you know, it's harder to grind out that profit um, and you need to adapt your strategies, okay? So um, currently I have probably, I have five total strategies. Two are running in my paper trading account because I'm evaluating the performance and I have three that are running with real money and all three are long biased. They only go long um, and they have certain obviously rules and conditions to buy and sell. The problem with that is obviously they're long biased and I know the market is going crazy right now. Um, I think Tesla passed $700, which is insane, but um, I know we're gonna go to a sideways market or see another sharp correction like we did in September. And although the idea of stopping the strategy and restarting it 30 days later works, I still think there's some room for improvement on getting those profits um, when the market goes down. They're a lot shorter in time frame and they're hard to time. They're really hard to time. Um, I'd rather go long because on average, you know, you know, generally the market goes up every day. So I'd rather try and hit those 60, 70% wins than try and get the, you know, low amount of wins going short, but it's still possible. And I think there's room for that. I like to add that to my strategies, but anyways, going for 2021, I'm going to focus on building strategies that work in a sideways market, obviously back test them with in and out of sample data, follow my process for doing that. So other than that, the next thing I learned with algo trading in 2020 is that it's really hard. It's really, really hard to do this, you know, consistently, right? It's hard to see your algorithm fail and lose money, right? Day after day, if not weeks. It's, hard, it's a hard kind of sight to see. And when do you pull the plug? Like, do you stop the strategy? Do you lower the position sizing? There's no right way to do this. It's just like, either you have the results or you don't, right? So you kind of have to figure it out as you go along and just, you know, roll with the punches. You know, you're gonna have losing days, you're gonna have losing weeks, maybe even months. Um, and if you don't adapt, or if you don't have some type of process where you can shut off the strategy or, or lower the position sizing, if you're losing a lot, you know, you're gonna get wiped out. So I was very conservative with my capital. Although with that being said, like I said, in October, November, I started trading the e-mini NASDAQ futures, um, NQ, and those are more highly leveraged, right? One point, I believe you get uh, $50. So if the NASDAQ moves 10 points, that's already $500 up or down. It could be, you could be down $500 and the NASDAQ can move easily, you know, 100 to 300 points in a day. So um, it can be quite a, quite a discrepancy, quite a diversion. So yeah, I learned that um, 
you know, I learned mostly risk tolerance. I set levels where I set my strategy to stop. You know, I started at like 1% of my account and slowly kind of raised that uh, higher and higher as I got more comfortable. And, um, you know, there were some days where, you know, it was just a really tough pill to swallow. I was down quite a bit, down 1%, 2%, 3%. Um, and, th you know, 3% doesn't sound like a lot, but when you see the dollar amount, you know, you learn, right? And you mature and you say, okay, you know, I, I can I can have these crappy days. And even back to back days, you know, I'd have days where I'd lose like three, four days in a row. Um, and we just have to start off the strategy. And, and sometimes I wouldn't trade for weeks or I think the longest I didn't trade for was like three weeks because I just shut off my strategy. It was not working with the current market cycle. And, you know, I just had to kind of sit back, go back to the drawing board on either creating new strategies um, or just waiting until the market was in my favor and restarting it, right? And that's what it came down to. Um, and that's what I learned. The biggest thing in 2020 was um, you can make a lot of money just not trading and waiting till the market's in your favor um, and then restarting it. Now, how do you know when the market's in your favor? You don't, right? You, you never, you, you don't, right? It's all, every day is kind of, you know, somewhat random. Um, you just have to use, you know, probabilities and, and statistics to, you know, be confident with, okay, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn on the strategy and I have this percentage chance of making this percentage of money, right? That's what it comes down to. Um, so I definitely, you know, overall learned uh, risk tolerance, when to stop my strategies and restart them at a later date. The last thing I learned was that you need a lot of money to make a lot of money, right? Like I made 10,000 in profit, which is great. I mean, it's, it's profit, right? There's nothing wrong with that. That's great. But obviously, you know, in terms of paying my bills or, or doing things I want to do, it's not enough, right? And I have other income sources, which, you know, obviously I recommend anyone that's watching this do have that, you know, do have a job or a separate business where you're making money as well, because to do this truly full time, like nonstop, you would have to probably raise a lot of capital, raise money, you know, build a team, or if you have a lot of capital from, I don't know, maybe you sold a business or you got inheritance or whatever, that's fine. But like, you need quite a bit of money to make good money in trading, right? You make a decent living, you need to have a six or seven figure account. Um, because, you know, 20% of, you know, say $10,000 or $20,000 is only two, 4,000. So um, that's not enough to live on, right? And even 20% of 100,000. So if you return 20%, which is incredible, like you're beating the market, that would only be 20,000 a year. And I'm sure you have like bills or stuff to pay for. That's probably more than 20,000. Uh, if it's less than great, but it's probably more. So you need either more money or a different income source. So um, as far as like me doing this full, full time and doing nothing else, I don't know if that'll ever be a reality. I think it's important to have different income sources, but you also need to be, you know, a master of one or, or you know, a couple things than just a master of all, uh, or sorry, what's the saying? Um, Jack of all trades, master of none, sorry. So yeah, for me to do this like full, full time and do nothing else, I don't know if that'll ever happen. You know, maybe as I grow my account and in five or 10 years, I can do that. But um, I love my other income sources. I love YouTube and my company. Um, so, you know, I think I'll be focusing on that and, you know, spending every day working on this, just not all, you know, eight, 10 hours on it um, and just slowly improve that over time. And, you know, maybe as I do better, um, I take higher risks and hopefully higher rewards, um, and then grow that account. Uh, ideally, you know, if I can do more than 10% a year, I'm really happy. Um, that's kind of my goal just beat 10% a year, beat the market, um, and show people that I can do that. So anyways, yeah, that's my video guys. This is Jake here. And this is my, my journey from, from algo trading in 2020. It's been crazy. Um, I feel like I'm rambling or ranting here, but I just wanted to share, um, this bit of knowledge before 2021 starts. Um, and get another video out to you guys. So anyways, if you found value in this video, if you liked it, if you can share some experience, leave a comment below. I would like to hear your thoughts. If you algo trade, if you want to get into algo trading, um, you know, whatever it may be, let me know in the comments below. And um, yeah, this is Jake here. We'll see you next week, I guess.